By the end of this video, you're not going to be able to look at After Effects the same way. The connect to function inside of DaVinci Resolve is pretty unique. It's really useful once you know it. A lot of people probably don't know that Fusion is a lot more like After Effects than what meets the eye. There's a lot of people that think it's just super different, but trust me, there's, there's similarities. One of those ways that it's similar is with the connect to function. Let me explain. While Fusion is better, in my opinion, there's no denying that there are a lot of similarities between the two programs. And if you've ever used After Effects, you know that one of the quintessential, if not the most essential feature of After Effects is being able to parent one layer to another. So what I mean by parenting is when you can take one layer, pick whip it and link it to the other so that wherever the parent layer goes, the child layer follows. You can do that in DaVinci Resolve too. The connect to function in DaVinci Resolve works very similarly. It's pretty much exactly the same. Let me show you. So we're in DaVinci Resolve. I'm just gonna make a very basic motion graphic here. Let's make a fusion composition. Let's grab a background. We're just gonna make our background blank here. I'm gonna take my logo, drop it in here. Transform this down. Okay, so you can see I have the workings of a very basic motion graphic here. I just have my logo and uh, my, my website URL. So what I want to do is I want to make the text pop up and the logo pop up with it perfectly linked. So here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to go into the node for text. I'm going to come into my layout tab in the inspector. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to animate the keyframes. So over on my timeline, I want the animation to have finished at about 10 frames. Okay, so I'm going to go to my 10th frame click the keyframe animation. If you're unfamiliar about how to use keyframes or don't really know how that system works, you can check out my motion graphics for beginners video. It's really easy breakdown about how to use motion graphics in Infusion. So I want my animation to finish up at frame 10, but at frame zero, I want my assets to start from way below. So I'm gonna make the text go down here, move it down. So now, since that's keyframed, you can see the text moves up, right? Easy. Now I wanna take my logo and make it move with the text. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come to my transform node here. What I did earlier was I inputted my logo when that's represented by the media in node, added a transform node so that I could size it down and move it to the middle of the screen. Transform is really cool because transform gives you the option to change any sort of like transformational aspect about whatever it's attached to. You can change the size, you can change the location, you can change the aspect, the horizontal vertical flip, the rotation, it, there's, there's a ton that you can do. Now in the transform node, you'll notice again that we have the option to keep keyframe the center or keyframe the position, but I'm not gonna do that like we did before. What I'm gonna do is right click on it and press connect to. Basically how this works was when we keyframed the other position for our text, that path was saved as path one, or I think it's like text.path1. And you can see that here, because when I press connect to and go to path one, you get position. So it's telling me I can connect this transform node and everything that it does to the path and the position of the other animation that I just said. So that's what I'm gonna do. So watch this, I'm gonna click this, and you can see that my logo is immediately attached to my text. Watch what happens when I move it. See, already we're parented. Half the job is done. One thing to note when doing this is that after it attaches to the text, you're not able to move the logo anywhere independent of the text. So there's a workaround for this. Because we attached the logo to the text in a singular transform node, that doesn't mean we can't add another transform node. So what I'm gonna do is push this over, add another transform node here and watch. I can move my logo independently of the text wherever I want. And when I play it back, it still is connected. But if you'd rather do things more like you do in After Effects, there's a way to do that too. So basically, if you wanna use the pick whip or a little pinwheel function, you have to have both attributes visible at the same time, right? Both center positions. So the first one we wanna have visible is text. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click text and then up in the inspector right here in the same page, this time being layout, in the same page that I can animate my position, I'm gonna come up here to the little pin icon, click that and what that does is it pins that specific page to my inspector. So now, no matter what else I open in my inspector, that will always be there. It's pinned there for us to see. What you wanna do is go into your transform node here, and we are going to right click on the center transform again. Now keep in mind which one is which. At the very top here we have transform, and at the bottom we have text. So instead of just regularly left clicking on the keyframe animation, I'm gonna right click and press expression. Now you'll see this expression pops up, but you also have the option for the little plus here. What's cool is the plus is kind of like the pick whip sign, but first, Let's talk about the expression. If you're an expression whiz, 
this feature is for you. Now, I'm not personally an expressionist. I can rudimentarily explain how they work. It's basically just saying it's connected to this specific effect. That's pretty much it. I'm not an expressions whiz. I'm sure they're easier than I make them out to be in my head. But if you just want to do things the visual way, the simple way, you can take this little plus right here. This is the pick whip. Now click and drag. You see this line? Really neat. You take this line and drag it over the specific attribute that you want to connect to, in this case being center of the text, because our text attributes are still pinned in the inspector and just let go. And you'll see my text here now in the expression says text one center. And you can see over here again in our viewport, it is again connected. Same thing, you can't move it independent of the text. You have to add another transform node. But boom, there it is. Really simple. That's how you parent things to each other inside of DaVinci Resolve. You can see it's really easy and definitely gives you a lot of freedom to pretty much just build your composition the way you want to. If you learned something today, hit the like button. It definitely helps out the algorithm. Maybe drop a comment, maybe don't, but you will because I'm using my telekinetic powers to make you want to drop a comment. But most of all, subscribe, follow, depending on the platform that you're watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. I do want to say, I watched The Prestige last night. It's this Christopher Nolan movie. That movie is amazing. Uh, all my coworkers at work were giving me crap because I haven't seen it yet. But if you have not seen The Prestige, that movie is great. I really, really, really recommend that one. <laughs>